Sporting dog adventures run, that boy, run. That was awesome. Everything you Good need boy. is here. here under the sun. Everything you need is here under the sun. The Sporting Dog Adventures podcast is proudly brought to you by Saki Acres Retrievers. Whether you're looking for a black, yellow, or chocolate Labrador Retriever puppy, please check out our website for more information at www.sakiacres.com. You can also email Jeff at sportingdogtv at gmail.com or call 262-215-9683. And remember, everyone deserves a soggy dog. It's Jeff Fuller from the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast, and I need a little help. Please stop what you're doing and give us a five-star rating. Follow us on the platform you're on. Give us a thumbs up. And above all, share our podcast with your friends and family. Our podcast will grow even more, and we can get more people involved in the sport we love with Dogs in the Field. Hey, welcome to the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast. I apologize, we are being so infrequent on our episodes, but we are in the process of buying a new house, which we close on in less than a week. We are in the process of selling our current house and selling a hunting property. We actually had our current house sold once. Uh, the deal fell through because they couldn't sell their house. Now we got it, we're selling it again. Beyond chaotic and I promise we are going to be far more consistent here upcoming, but I've got a good show. It is getting toward hunting season, and I thought we'd do kind of a combined episode with travel and hunting gear kits that you could have along for when you're out on the road with your dog. In the second part, we had a listener that asked what we do if we have a puppy that is not perfect in their health or a puppy that would possibly be injured in a litter, how we handle that. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the importance of having a good e-collar fit on your dog when you're doing your training and having them hunt out in the field. So it's gonna be a fun episode. It should give you a lot of great information and we can get started. We actually have a special guest. Memphis is here. She uh, she would like to be part of the show today. So oh, let's see here. We'll get Memphis up. So Memphis is the co-host of the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast. She loves her job. She does a great job. And she thought that she would be very well equipped to help us with today's episode. Uh, as far as getting started on the main topic, talking about when you are traveling, whether it's on a hunting trip or a trip in general, I thought of this idea because they read an interesting article and that was about in Michigan, they have something that is very similar to Parvo, but it doesn't show up as Parvo that dogs are getting sick. And Parvo is Parvo influenza. It is a type of influenza where dogs will get very tired. They will throw up, they'll have diarrhea, they can run a fever and they can, they can also have blood in their stool. It is something that with younger dogs or with older dogs, it can be fatal. And this was interesting because it was something that was in the Michigan area that they were telling people to be concerned about. And it is something when we talk to people about puppies going home, we always tell them, beware and stay away from the dog areas at waysides and different spots because of the fact that so many people don't get their dogs vaccinated. And this would be a beware of dog parks, dog ponds in different places because these things spread through feces, which could be a dog that uh, defecates in the water or defecates near the water, and then you have rain and it washes it in, or a dog that possibly would have something on them and then they go in the water and it, gets, it, it, it starts to spread. All of these issues when they're bacterial or they're a protoplasm, which is a single cell that lives in stagnant water, happen commonly. That is why when dogs drink out of a puddle, they will get sick. It is not necessarily that they're sick, it is probably a parasite that then they gain immunity to. In essence, it's why people don't drink out of a pond. If you drank out of a pond, you would get sick because we have absolutely zero immunity to many things. And it is something to keep I guess, in your thought process. So when you travel with your dogs, I personally take my dogs to areas that don't have a common area for dogs and clean up after the dogs so that I know that they're safe that way. 
I also take a lot of clean water along with them. So if they're thirsty, they're not drinking out of a puddle. They are not drinking out of a pond or a river. They are drinking out of water that I'm providing them. And that's whether we are traveling or we're hunting. You can't always prevent dogs from drinking when they're out doing a retrieve in the water or when you're out doing upland and they see something that, that looks like it's tasty. But if you keep them hydrated, generally speaking, that will help keep them away from that. I always have a, I guess, a jump kit or a go kit that now that I don't travel as much, it's more of a, a kit at one property and a kit at the other property because those are the two areas that I hunt. In that kit, I have cephalexin, I have amoxicillin, and I have metronidazole. Cephalexin or keflex is for a surface infection. Your dog gets cut and they get an infected cut. Amoxicillin would be more of an internal infection. And then metronidazole is for that parasite for a dog that it's also an anti-diarrheal. It is for if a dog would get into something that would affect them gastrically. Great stuff to have if you can get your vet to give you a script for it so you can have it on hand. If you keep it in a refrigerator, it'll last a long time, uh, usually up to a year. And it is just something that is great to have with you. Uh, they've got EMT gel for dogs, which is a uh, gel that you can put on that forms almost a harder surface on it uh, so that it doesn't fall off. We always have gauze. We have wraps. We have wound clean for cleaning the dogs up. And my favorite is vet wrap, which is usually sold in the horse section. It's like a stretchy uh, bandage that you can uh, wrap around that will hold in place and then it will it will basically keep the the bandage affixed or in place. I will also have duct tape along which sounds mean but dogs are great at pulling stuff off of themselves as far as uh, vent wrap or a uh, type of gauze. So I will have that and I'll have an old sock. If you have an old sock you can put it on the dog's leg, have it up to about here, you can tape it onto their leg and then it will stay there. So if the dogs are lickers or they're trying to tear at it, it'll keep it covered. It also keeps dirt off of it. And it's easy to swap out. These are great ideas to have along for your dog. And honestly, the other thing Memphis obviously doesn't want to hear, it, but the cone of shame. You can get soft cones that now that are really wonderful, but it's a soft cone. It's not going to tear up your woodwork. It's not going to tear up uh, the inside of your car, if a dog has it on, it is not going to tear up a hotel room or a lodge that you're staying at. But have a cone along so that if the dog has an injury and they are a chronic licker, chronic chewer, it will keep them away from it. Try to plan everything out so that you can have your dog in a good place and have them so that they're healthy. And you want to make sure that you have this stuff because a lot of times when we're traveling, when we're out hunting, one, vets are hard to get into now, but two, if you're out in a remote area, you might not be able to get to a vet for a day or two. So if you have this stuff, you can have your canine in a much healthier way and you can keep them safe. So I hope you enjoyed this part of the show, which is traveling and a uh, first aid kit, med kit for your dog. Next up, I wanna talk about a viewer question that we had, which was what do we do with puppies if we have one that has a slight defect or is injured while it was here. All that more coming up after this. Dog kennels can be beautiful. That's the basis on which we built DCT kennels. We give you the opportunity to have a beautiful kennel that blends seamlessly with your home decor while providing a safe and comfortable respite for your dog. Visit dctkennels.com to see all of our custom selections and start building your dream custom doggy crate Dunza. The Sporting Dog Adventures podcast is proudly sponsored by Trupanion, medical insurance for the life of your pet. We all know that unexpected accidents can happen. That's why I partner with Trupanion's breeder support program to send all my puppy buyers home from Soggy Acres with an offer for Trupanion coverage. Learn more about Trupanion and sign up for their breeder support program by visiting trupanion.com breeder. Be sure to tell them that Sporting Dog Adventures sent you. 
Hey, welcome back to the show. Now I wanted to talk to you about what we do with pups if we have one that is born where it has a slight injury or if it's actually injured while it's a puppy. And this was a viewer question. If you have questions, please, sportingdogtv at gmail.com. Send them in. We love getting these. We love interacting with our, with our listeners. And we love trying to help with questions that people have because I don't think of everything. But I can talk recently about a litter uh, that we had. We had a puppy that it had a weird gait, the way it would stand. And ultimately, the puppy had a malformed hip. It was something that I have yet to have happen in a pup this little, but I believe it was just injured when it was born and it didn't, uh, it didn't heal properly or it just, it's really hard when puppies are growing so fast to have something even heal at all so that it would form properly. So we did x-rays. We made sure that it wasn't something that was going to be, I guess, what we'd call life threatening or something where you have to put the pup down, but it ultimately was something where the pup was work getting around fine. The pup was gonna have a quality of life. Honestly, it probably would never have an issue if it wasn't a hunting dog, if it was just a pet dog. And as long as you kept the dog at a good height and weight proportion, the dog probably wouldn't have any issues. But also if there was an issue, we figured out what that fix would cost when the dog was older so that we could present that to someone if they wanted that puppy. And then, I went to our list of people that were getting pups and I told them, hey, we have a puppy that has got a abnormality in one of its hips. The puppy is otherwise healthy. We've had the puppy looked over by the vet. Would you want the puppy for free? Because at that point, we can't sell a pup that is not for what people want, which is they wanted an athletic dog and they wanted a good pet. We had both of those. It's just we had that abnormality. One of the families actually decided, yes, they would love that puppy. They took the pup home. I've gotten great pictures from them since. They're having a wonderful time with their dog. But it is something where if you're going to be in the dog world, you have to have this stuff mapped out. You would think that maybe you'd keep the dog. We've had that happen in the past. Our dog, Scarlet, uh, that loves to sing and howl. She actually has... Uh, some issues when she was young, my wife fell in love with her as we were caring for her. It took until almost six months old until she was healthy. And now she's not a breeding dog, but she's got a great life here with us. At the same time, we can't have the Island of Misfit Toys where we have every dog that has an issue that lives here. Uh, but uh, it is nice to have the ability to offer these dogs to someone and, and again, if you have this where you have a dog that has an issue, be completely upfront because you want this dog to have a good life. If they have a special need that they're going to have, you want the people to have full disclosure so that they have this dog. They're going to give it a great life. And then from there, it is part of business. You're going to have times when you're going to give pups away over the course of 25 years in the business. I've probably had, I think five times, but you're going to have those times when you have to do what's right, which is to find the dog a good home. Also give all the information. And then yes, you're going to probably lose money on it because you're going to make sure that dog is medically ready to go and in a good place and then find it somewhere that it will live out its life. So that I hope answers that question. Again, if you have questions you would like answered on our show, sportingdogtv at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and then use them on one of our upcoming episodes. So that's it for this part of the show. Stay tuned next as we're going to talk about a hunting tip, which is making sure you have your e-collar properly fitted, whether in waterfowl or upland. All that and more coming up after this. If you love the shooting sports like I do, you need to check out our friends at Mech Outdoors. They have fantastic products, whether you're looking at shot shell or metallic reloading, or you want to get yourself a clay thrower so you can practice up for the season. 
For more information, check out their website at MacOutdoors.com. Welcome to Boucher and Janesville, where customer service is our number one priority. Our customers come back to us because of the experience that we provide for them. We are here to make sure that we find you the right car, one that fits your budget, and do so in a timely manner. When we say we ride with you every mile, it means we care about you and how you are treated. Estamos con personal que habla español en los departamentos de servicio y venta. Our certified technicians are here to help you with all your service needs. Visit us today at Boucher.com. At Boucher, we ride with you every mile. Hey, welcome back to the show. So now our hunting tip is not oh so much hunting, but more of an equipment type of a tip for you for when you have your dog out hunting. You want to make sure that when you're running your dog with an e-collar, you have it on tight. Now you should be able to base, basically get two fingers under that collar and no more. People will think that it's mean because it is on incredibly tight. You're going to put it right under their chin and you're going to put it not down here, but up at the top of the neck, right under their chin, because that is where their neck tapers and is at the narrowest part. If you have the collar on tight, it is actually far more humane because if it's on loose, what'll happen is you've got two probes that touch and that's where the electric uh, stimulation runs between. If the dog is looking over this way and the probe on here is not touching, you're gonna be like, the dog's not listening. You're gonna turn it up, then the dog looks back. Now you are correcting the dog with a much higher correction that is unfair to the dog. They couldn't feel it the first time. That is why they didn't listen, but yet you're turning it up and you're correcting them. The other thing is, if you don't have it on where it is, again, up high because it's tapered and it's not going to get looser, and you have it where it is under the chin, if it's too loose, it'll move back and forth. Now, this can present a much larger problem if you're doing training or if you're doing upland because the dog is so active. But ultimately, what will happen is you will end up with a dog that gets a hot spot, which is an infection that would be on their skin. This is not a huge deal, but it is disgusting. And it's also gonna take your dog out from having them in water because you're gonna to have to clean it up. You're gonna to have to keep topical on it. You're gonna to have to put them on an antibiotic, but it is like snot, it smells, it is a nasty looking thing, and it is completely avoidable. The last thing is make sure that you're giving the dog's skin a break from a collar. Don't leave the collars on for over 12 hours. If you are doing an upland hunt, you're out west, you are taking the dog out, take the collar off when you're in between, when you're on breaks. If you go to lunch, take the collars off, turn them off, charge them, do whatever you need to do, but have it so that their skin gets rust because then you won't have that irritation that could lead to a hot spot. So I hope that helps for your hunting tip today. I hope you guys enjoyed our show. Stay tuned next week. We will probably be at our new house and I can have our new place. We'll give you a little bit of a tour, at least a look around at the computer. It has been a wild and woolly time for selling a house and buying a house, but ultimately we are moving our business to a new property. Soggy Acres will no longer be on a soggy property, albeit we've got our hunting property that will be, I guess, our adopted soggy part of the uh, title and we will give you more updates on our new property next show. Thank you again for listening. Have a great week and God bless. Sporting dog adventures, run boy, run. Everything you need is here under the sun.